Okay, Sean Clare, we're here in uh, Estepona in the Costa del Sol, not a bad setting for a Tuesday afternoon. How does this compare to some of the other pre-season trips you've, you've been on over the years? Um, this is a good one to be fair, I think um, the hotel is really nice, it's got really good facilities and stuff like that um, and also the, the rooms have a lot of space so you, you can be together with a lot of players in one room and, and kind of bond in that way so um, I think everyone's enjoying it, the sun helps, it's hot, yeah. it's nice, um, nice to get a bit of sun um, and yeah there's, there's good, good stuff to do when, when we do get some free time we can relax and kind of recover. So. How important are those those bits of downtime for the, the bonding side of it? Because we always hear about hard work, hard work, yeah. hard work, but also about the bonding and spending a bit of time together. Because I've seen you guys down there, even we, we got back from the gym, you were straight out there all together in the pool, yeah. pool side. We pulled you away from doing that now, so thanks <laughs> for that. But like, I mean, how important are those moments as a team for the season ahead? Uh, I think they're massive. Um, most teams do stuff like this, whether it's away, abroad or in, in the country, but I think going on the training pitch and working hard together and putting in those hard yards and then coming back and, and getting to kind of reflect on it and chill together and have fun and in between um, all the work I think it's massive. Um, like I was saying we, we have breakfast dinner and lunch together, we're together most of the day um, and also we have downtime together so it's, it's really good for bonding because it, it's a long season, it's a difficult season, there's going to be ups and downs so you kind of need to know how your mate is next to you, know how the person next to you in the changing room is and, and be able to pick them up when they're down and they can pick you up. So I think it, it's really helpful. It's been a, a, a different summer for you, hasn't it? I think it's yeah. fair to say. Obviously you missed the last game of last season so you could um, start your surgery. On the, I mean, can you tell us a little bit about that process last season and yeah. well, tell us what happened and, and, and why you took the steps you did? Yeah, um, basically obviously it's been something that I've had all my life. Um, it's never really bothered me, I've just got on with it. Uh, a lot of people have said, why don't you take it and stuff like that. Um, but it, it became a part of me. Um, and then uh, it, when you have large kind of uh, birthmarks or um, it's called a congenital nevus, I think. Uh, when you have large ones, they can be at risk of skin cancer. So I've known that kind of throughout my life. Um, and I've seen um, uh, Mr. Shibu, the consultant, since I was a baby. So the same guy kind of forever. Um, and he's always been there saying you can get it done whenever you want but it's never really bothered me um, until recently it, it started changing a bit um, and he advised that kind of nipping it in the bud before um, it got uh, too far and because if it gets too far and you do then remove it you still have some bits left so um, yeah his advice was kind of it's changing it's showing signs that it could potentially become something more sinister so it's better to get it get it done before it does happen so yeah I went with that and uh, to fairs a massive thanks to um, the club really the chairman um, the the physios the doctor all the staff for their for their support and help in, in me getting it done because it was a lot trickier than I thought it would be I thought it was quite straightforward um, yeah it ended up being three ops and um, and lots of different stuff to do now having to wear a mask and Everyone at the club's really supported me with that, um, all the way down from the chairman to even even the boys have been really supportive. So yeah, from from me to everyone, it's, it's a massive thank you because um, they made it a lot easier for me than it probably would have been without them. Talk us through those three ops. Obviously, the first mm -hmm. one. I mean, how, so it was more extensive than you thought it might be. Is that mm. what you're saying? Like what what happened in the first operation and, and what happened thereafter? Yeah, I think it's all. It always seems less extensive when someone's just telling you about it than when you go through it. Um, the first stop, as you can see, I've got a nice little scar here. Um, uh, so to do the skin graft, you have to get skin from somewhere. Normally people get it from legs or stuff like that. Um, this skin not only matches better with my face, it's also a, a skin that is more relatable to this side of my face. So it moves like a face would. So it stops the risk of kind of it coming undone or, or infections a lot more. Um, so they insert a balloon in my neck um, and they expand it over time and then remove that skin um, and take off the, the birthmark and play, replace it with that. So those are the two main ops. Um, and then the one in between was uh, they had to uh, wash out the area around the balloon because it had got slightly infected. Um, so yeah, that was, that was one that wasn't ideal. Um, that was only local anaesthetics. I could feel them pulling and yanking them. But but it was all right, we got through it and now we're here today and it's behind me, but so yeah. 
You talk about the mask, we've seen it in, in a lot of yeah. the photos and the footage we've been putting out this week, fans have noticed it. It's given you a, quite a unique look, you look a bit like Batman and all that sort of stuff, yeah. but it's quite, um, it's quite a decent bit of kit, isn't it? Sort yeah. of, is it moulded to your face? Mm -hmm. Is it sort of exactly the right fit? I mean, those sort of things are, are pretty special in this day and age, those sort of things yeah, you wouldn't yeah. get years ago. Yeah, I mean, I've gone from one unique look to another. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so they, they put on a, a, a plaster kind of on your face with a, with a silicone gel to match it to your face. And then that gets sent off and it's all handmade um, from carbon fiber and stuff like that. And then you have to go back and get it fitted. So the club are really good with that. Um, it's not an easy thing to get, get done. And they were happy for me to go and get the consultations and, and help kind of um, lean on, lean on the, the people making it so I could get it done for this trip because we only, we only did it at the beginning of um, last week. So uh, we pushed it and thankfully it was done so I can join in fully. Um, yeah, but uh, it's a, take a bit of getting used to, but it's all right. Is it something you're gonna have to wear for a while, like for the foreseeable? Yeah, yeah definitely at least for three to four months. That's the bare minimum, I think, but it'll probably be, um, the, especially said it might be the full season it's just to be safe because because um, the skin it will be fragile and won't heal properly for a, for a long time, so uh, it stops infection and having to go under under the knife again. Yeah, but, and is that just like just being in the environment, other players like contacts, maybe the yeah, ball hitting you in the face, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, like even today when I was wearing the mask, there was a there was a, a bounce off a player and his arm caught me and, and stuff like that, and it's just normal. That's that's yeah. football. Um, you can't control your body all the time. Everyone's fighting for the ball and 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 playing how you should play. So in training and, and in games, I'm going to get contact there. So. Um, it just uh, reduces the risk of, of something happening. Speaking about the birthmark again, obviously something you've had like from birth, <laughs> quite yeah, literally. There you go. <laughs> growing up, I mean, something like that, I guess, can affect people in different ways. Growing up as as a young kid, yeah. like at school or any or any environment with their peers, it's it's quite obvious that it's something that hasn't really bothered you and yeah. that kind of stuff. I mean, do you think it's something that has been a big part of? creating the character you are and all that sort of thing. Do you think it has played a part in, in um, you being yourself? Because you are sort of um, your own person, if that makes sense. Yeah, 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 no, 100%. I mean, it's not always been easy, um, especially when I was younger or, or meeting new people. It, it, it has been kind of um, something that has sparked either conversation or looks or not bullying, but remarks and stuff like that. Um, but that's, that's life. Um, it's definitely given me some resilience in that sense. Um, but yeah, even as a kid, I think, I don't know whether because it's not in my eye line or whatnot, it's never really affected me. People were always like, how'd you deal with it? And it was almost like, um, deal with what? <laughs> I mean, it's just part of me. So um, yeah, it was not emotional, but it was kind of a, a big deal for, for me and my family to get removed. They've mm. obviously, like you said, from birth, I've had that. So for my parents and sister and stuff like that. Um, and then obviously friends that have known me, they've only ever known me like that. So um, it'll be strange when I do finally get all of this stuff off and and it's healed and I'll probably be the most rattled looking in the mirror. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's definitely shaped who I am today. I think it's yeah. given me kind of a, a self-confidence and self-belief that um, and stuff like that. But obviously that wavers from time to time and, and uh, some remarks or some looks are a little bit harder to take than others. But um, as I've got older, it's kind of never really bothered. Yeah, and I mean, you do like to express yourself in, in ways as well. Yeah. We've seen all sorts of different hairstyles and haircuts yeah. have come back this season with uh, with what you got now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. again, is that another part of you? You just like, it's just like, you just enjoy that side yeah. of things and, and expressing yourself in different ways. It's, 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 it's exciting to see because we don't know what we're going to get next from Sean Clare. <laughs> no, definitely. I mean, football's always been my, my, one, my one love, my one true love in terms of um, how I like to express myself, but uh, I've got a lot of interests outside of football. Um, so yeah, like style, fashion, I like that, um, stuff like that. Uh, hairstyles, I like I like trying different things. They don't always work, <laughs> but um, no, I like trying different things and, and, and just kind of experiencing life, do you know what I mean? Um, I just kind of want to enjoy myself as much as I can, as well as doing what, what I'm good at and, and working hard at my craft. Um, so yeah, no, nah, I'd say, I say I like, I like a lot of things, music. There's a lot of players here who like music and stuff like that. So a lot of people get on through that. Um, yeah, I think, I, think I, I like to express myself in a lot of different ways. We've seen um, in the gym, there's been, it started off with Glenn Schimmel, the goalkeeper coach, yeah, putting his tunes started on. Off strong. Chuxinike then... has, uh, has taken over. At what point do you step in and say, this is where I want to express myself and put my tunes on? <laughs> to who, be has fair. To, who has to control over that? Because I know at one point, Piercy, as captain yeah, a couple Piercy. of years ago, did it. But is it a free-for-all now? Are you waiting to see who's going to take it? Yeah, it'll be interesting on, on game day, to be fair. Piercy was good. Piercy was good. I like Piercy's music. Not everyone did, but I was a big fan. 
Um, Shim started off strong, started off very strong, and I think he ran Tailed out of off. songs. He didn't Plain have any got, to the, got to the bottom. <laughs> yeah, he didn't have any songs from the last hundred years. I think. So, um, <laughs> nah, he started off strong, but um, Chuck's listens to a lot of music that I listen to. Um, I think I've, I've got quite a wide range um, from my family. Obviously, my mum's from Ghana, my dad's from uh, born in Liverpool. It is quite a, <laughs> quite a bit range. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. Uh, I, I like a lot of different music, so um, what any, anyone's really playing, I kind of like. And for me, it's, it's the rhythm, it's the tempo and stuff like that. So I, I'm easy, if I'm honest. Sometimes I make a fuss, but <laughs> it's only for banter, really. <laughs> I like most things. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, I think Chucks is a strong contender for DJ. Okay. We'll keep an eye on that. Yeah, as long as Shims doesn't do it. Do it right. <laughs> He's lost his mantle yeah, already. Yeah, get him out of that. Let's talk a bit about football then, finally. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, it's your second season coming to a club which you know, you can easily forget you know very well because yeah. it's, your journey from a young age started at Charlton. I mean, how have you found the last year? I mean, we can rewind back to a mm -hmm. year ago. Um, how did that feel coming back to, to somewhere where you were in the academy? had the disappointment of, of being let go years before, yeah. but working your way back, that must feel like a real big achievement for you. Yeah, I mean, when I left, it was a big, big decision um, because I really enjoyed being at the club. Um, looking back on it now, it's worked well. Um, so coming back was kind of a no-brainer for me. Uh, like I said in, in previous interviews, I've said um, it was it was almost like I had unfinished business because my dream was to play for the first team and I now had the opportunity. Um, so yeah, no, it was a great feeling um, walking back in and not, not loads of change in terms of where things were. So it was almost like being at home. Um, but uh, yeah, looking back, it, I'm really happy I'm here. Um, it's a place that I feel comfortable. I'm, I'm near family, I'm near friends, but it's also a club that I understand. Um, I've grown up understanding what the fans want and what the fans require. It's a massive club. Um, it's a club that shouldn't be where it is and I, I want to be part of getting it back to where it should be. So um, it makes a lot of sense. For, it made loads of sense for me to come back. Um, last season was, was tough for all of us. Um, I think as, a, as I was a fan um, and, and still am uh, of the club, it, it was tough to kind of see where the club should be and where we were. That is football, unfortunately. Um, it, it's very up and down. Um, but the way the boys have come in this year, everyone everyone seems at it. Um, so I, I can only be hopeful, really. We've got we've got new gaffer, new players. I'm sure more to come. Um, the chairman's really, really uh, backing everything and stuff like that. So I think everything is moving in the right direction, in my opinion. Is there a real fire in the belly of, of yourself and some mm. of the other lads that were here last year, bearing in mind what happened last year, what we want to put that right, I guess, with, and, and make, give the fans something to cheer about and prove that, that Charlton Athletic can be so much more in this division. Definitely. I think, I think we, don't, we do need to prove it, but I think it's just known. It's almost known worldwide. Um, but yeah, there's a, real, there's a real passion to do well from a lot of players. Um, you can see it from the players that they brought in as well, um, but from the players who have been here, everyone really wants to do well. Everyone's worked hard. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do loads over the summer, but everyone's coming back in, in great condition um, and, and everything's sharp. The passing drills are sharp, uh, the possessions are sharp um, and, and all the fitness stuff as well. So um, I think everyone's really looking forward to the season, um, looking forward to kind of putting things right because uh, we know where the club should be. We know we, we underperformed as a team um, and we know we're good enough to do a lot better. So it's about really kind of pulling our fingers out now, working hard through this period, getting what we need to out of it and, and all guns blazing first game of the season.